Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Monday, April 15th, and then we'll see how things look for Tuesday, April 16th. Oh my, over the weekend, if you had a chance to watch any of the videos, we saw lots of different things converging together, suggesting that on an intraday basis, daily basis, weekly basis, we were at support. Now, usually the market would bounce up out of that. We don't need to necessarily see as many things come together as we did after last Friday's session to cause us to bounce. Well, we had a whole list in the videos that I went through, but we still ended up breaking below those levels anyway. So we're turning more negative. We are now not only negative in the short term, which we have been, but we are starting to get oversold there. We're now negative in the intermediate term. The long term is still positive. There's a lot of things that the market is not really liking right now. We didn't see the smart money coming in and do a lot of buying. We were still below average with volume. And the technical picture for the market is now looking more negative. On the positive side, we have fallen pretty far pretty fast, at least in the short term. And at some point, you might see some buyers come in and try to continue to buy in the dip. So far, that hasn't worked. But if we see some buying come in and give us a little bit of a bounce, that might at least slow things down a little bit. The developments over the weekend were positive from a geopolitical standpoint, at least as far as the U.S. stock market is concerned. And Europe ended up having a good day. We opened really solid, but then after the open kind of got settled a little bit, we saw selling that took us negative, broke through major support, and closed pretty much at the low for the day. So it was, if you think Friday was negative, Monday was even more negative. A couple of notes just to go over. Um, over the weekend, I had a lot more viewers and I had a number of people subscribe to the channel for the first time. I want to say a very heartfelt welcome to you. Those of you that have been watching the videos for a while, I'm very grateful to you. I like your support very much, and it it's really encouraging. Those of you that are new and have kind of stumbled across these videos and find some value in them, just welcome. And I hope you find the videos that I post helpful to give you some insight as to what's actually happening. Also, I'm, I'm not trying to make an excuse here. I developed a case of the flu that started about... Friday midday, and then it just was full blown by Friday night and then Saturday morning. And so I I wanted to take some time to rest. And so I did the daily video for Monday's session. And then I was exhausted after that. And then I marathoned through the other four videos during Sunday. And I made some mistakes. And I always do. I fumble over my words sometimes. And I'm I misspeak. I say positive instead of negative or green instead of blue or things like that. But I, and, and I'm, I've been lecturing now going on my 40th year when I'm in front of people, that doesn't seem to be a problem, but you put me in a room in front of a microphone by myself and it, it I can see where that can be confusing and I'm not necessarily apologizing for that. Because it, it's just people make mistakes. What I'm concerned about is if I say something that genuinely confuses you, where I say positive instead of negative, up instead of down, red instead of blue, whatever, send me, you know, post a comment asking me to clarify or send me an email saying, okay, I really didn't get what you're talking about here. When I put together these videos, I use PowerPoint, and these are just bullet points that I go with. Then I quite often go off script and talk about things that pop into my head as they are coming in. And sometimes I get things a little backwards and I can make some mistakes. And so, again, those things happen. I'm human. And recording in this kind of a way is different even though i've been doing it for quite a while it's very different than being in front of a live class or live group of people what i'm concerned about is confusion 
if if you look at a chart and you're like, he said one thing, but I'm looking at the chart. Okay. Um, please ask for clarification. I used to go through and edit these videos. Now they're all take one because I would spend longer editing the video than it would take me to prepare and record the video. And that's two or three hours every day. And if I'm doing a bunch of videos over the weekend, it, it's just too much time to do that. I want to do a professional job. I want to be clear when I'm speaking. And mind you, I've not heard any feedback about this. This is, I watch these videos myself. That's how I started this whole thing in the first place. And it bothers me when I'm making mistakes. And so I just want to get ahead of that and say, if I ever say something or try to explain something and it's not quite clear, let me know because I'm supposed to be kind of good at this <laughs> and I want to be good at it. And I really want to help folks that take the time to watch these videos. Okay, enough of that. Let's go back and talk about what happened right at the open. It looked like, okay, we're, we closed above the 50-day moving averages, intraday, daily, weekly support. The futures were positive. We gapped higher right at the open. It looked like, here we go. We're going to bounce up out of this. And we did right at the beginning. Prices rose up to R1 at 51.63. That was the high right there. Then we turned and went back down to the daily pivot at 51.35. Then we came down and kind of flirted with the unchanged level in an attempt to fill the gap, which is very common. And I was watching this all unfolding and I thought, okay, we'll just come down to the unchanged level and then the smart money will come in and start to buy and we'll take things higher. Well, that's not what happens. We tried to rebound by climbing back above the daily pivot a little bit there, but then we fell back below the daily pivot and then the unchanged level. We actually turned over and went negative. Selling then started to pick up the pace and we fell below S1 at 50.96. So now we dropped below 5,100. We also went down below S2 at 50.68 and we closed near the low for the day. All right, so this means things at this point are more negative than we thought. We saw all those things coming together in different indexes, in different sectors, and the market still couldn't bounce up out of that. That is a real concern. We were down 1.2%. We were below average with volume. Now, we've been below average with volume now for the last number of weeks. We did see above average volume last Friday and then the big decline that we saw a week previous there. But we really need the smart money to come in and do some buying. And they're just not doing that right now. Our technicals, as I said, and I'll go through all the charts and explain this. In the short term, we're negative, but looking extreme negative. In the intermediate term, we're turning more negative. And there's even a few extreme negative indications already. But we're continuing to be positive in the long term. That takes longer to actually switch. And it's about inflation and interest rates. We're getting stronger than expected economic reports. There's geopolitical concerns. There's been a lot of Fed speak. And there's going to be more in the upcoming week. You would think they would come out and try to settle things down, but nothing really has had that much of an impact. And after having a really nice run up into the end of the first quarter, we're seeing some weakness in the market right now that we thought might be a pullback. Then we came down to the 50-day moving averages. We're dropping below that. So now it's looking more like a decline. And if we continue to fall, we're actually looking at more of a correction at this point. The geopolitical concerns, even though they seem to get settled somewhat over the weekend, that could escalate again at any time. And the initial reaction was positive to what happened there, but realizing that that's kind of unfinished business at this point. And then I also added Iran over here to the list, even though they, they've kind of been involved this whole time. They're actually, it's more of a direct confrontation between Iran and Israel right now. So some comments. Israel did thwart a massive missile and drone attack by Iran over the weekend. And this is the pop news right now. And this is what everybody's talking about. And there's already folks turning against Israel, but 
the unsettled nature of it all is what we really focus on for how it affects the stock market. And the initial reaction was positive for stocks, but then tur turned negative as Israel may seek to retaliate. And this is also open-ended right now, because if they do retaliate, the U.S. has come out and said, we're not going to help you. We did help you defend yourself, but if you go back and retaliate against Iran, you're on your own at this point. And that can produce a lot more uncertainty about things. The S&P did close below 5,100 and below its 50-day moving averages, and a lot of support was broken in Monday's session. The mega caps and the semis underperformed. Now, they've been doing better, and these were two areas that were at their 50-day moving averages. Whether you look at the daily chart or their 13-week moving averages, that's what I use on the weekly charts. They underperformed, and that really dragged things down, and all 11 S&P sectors ended up being negative on the day. So it was a broad market decline. Oil fell. It even got hit a little bit. It came in at $85.44 a barrel. Here's our short-term list. And I don't know why there's two little brackets here, but that's problem with the keyboard sometimes. We're looking at the VIX going up pretty extreme as the market's been going down. And we use the VIX and then an RSI on the VIX to show that we may have gone up with the VIX a little too far too fast. We're still looking extreme when we look at the 20 period exponential moving average of the S&P 500. And then the simple moving average when we look at the stocks inside of the S&P 500, the short term stochastics, we're, and, but we're declining across the board there. And the force index is also looking extreme. Intermediate term, we have both the S&P and NYSE McClellan oscillators. They're looking extreme negative now. The PMO studies and the percent B, something that doesn't happen very often. This could actually be a little bit positive. This means we close down below the lower Bollinger Band. Then I'll, I have charts to show this to you. We're coming down with the 150 and 200 period simple moving averages, but we're still extreme positive there. The current scenario, we're still going with the idea because the Fed has pretty much stated this, that it's likely that they're done raising rates unless we see this continuation of this wave of stronger than expected economic reports. And I'm hearing more and more. Now, when I say hearing, I don't watch the financial media. I don't really watch a lot of other videos. There's a few people that I tune into and a few things that I read through, but most of the conclusions that I reach is just by doing this for so long and just checking little facts here and there to come to the conclusions that I come to. But it, the Fed pretty much came out in their last meeting with the idea that if we do anything going forward, it's going to be to cut rates. Well, now even that is in question at this point. The dollar was down just a little bit. It was virtually unchanged. But it's been really strong lately, and that's been putting some pressure on stocks. And interest rates went up, and I'm going to change this a little bit. We closed at 4.5% on Friday. We closed at 4.63% after Monday. So I'm, I want to have a little comparison here to show you how interest rates are really bobbing all over the place. We're still inverted with the yield curves. Sentiment has now switched over to negative. We had been neutral after Friday at 46 we dropped down to 41, so that's actually turning more negative now. Our trend, we are starting a trend too, and it's a negative trend. The ADX is starting to cross above the moving average, both in the short and intermediate term. We're still below 20 though, so it's not necessarily a confirmed trend at this point. The bias is negative with the down day, and our momentum is negative when we look at the last two, three, four, five days together. The economic reports that came out, and this was actually stronger than expected, and there was a little gyration down right after the report came out, but there, we pretty much went up after that, and that really helped give us a positive open. Retail sales came in up 0.7%, so people are still out buying stuff. Now, if you look at longer-term charts of this, I was looking at one on Twitter where we're pretty much flat, so even though this was stronger than expected, it's not that we're going up, it's just that we're not going down at this point. And that was stronger than the 0.4 that had been expected. And retail sales is a huge, I've seen anywhere from about 60% of the US economy is retail sales. So if this is staying healthy, that usually means that the economy is looking fairly healthy too. 
The last time we had this report, it came in up 0.9%. If you take out autos, we were up 1.1%. That is a lot more than half a percent they had expected. Last time it came in up 0.6%. We then had the New York Fed Empire State Manufacturing. It came in, it's kind of disappointing, at a minus 14.3. They expected it to be at a minus 6, but it's actually an improvement from the minus 20.9 that we received last time. Business inventories were up 0.4%. They expected it to be up 0.3%. Last time it was unchanged. The NAHB housing market index came in at 51 as expected and also what we saw last time. Here are some charts showing the core retail sales year over year where they're going back up. See, if you look at this, we went down during the COVID plunge and then everybody got this money and they went out and bought stuff. But for the most part, we're pretty much going sideways here with retail sales which doesn't really suggest a lot of growth, but it's not breaking down either. And we look at month over month where it was up, but not up as much as what we saw in the previous reading. This is the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index. This is mainly the New York area, hence the NY in the name, but that's a huge area and very influential to the economy where it was negative, but not quite as negative as what we saw last time. And then business inventories, and the reason I bring this up is when companies produce products, they need those to go out the door because now they're being delivered. They've sold the products and now they're gone. Well, if they make a product and it just sits on the shelf, then maybe it's not sold yet. So when we see a big buildup of inventories in a very general sense, that can be taken as negative. And we did see where inventories went up. Then we look at the NAHB housing market index, which was unchanged from the last time that we saw this. Then some Isabel Net blog charts. They're saying analysts are penciling in margins falling 30 basis points quarter over quarter. That's the yellow area. And that's what's starting to be reported now where they do see a drop off. But then going forward, they see things improving. And then small cap, the forward PE, and I usually go over this in the intermarket analysis video over the weekend, but I use a different chart to show that. And from an evaluation standpoint, small caps look pretty good. The only problem is we were thinking that the economy was switching over to a more small cap friendly environment with interest rates going down and value and growth being able to both go up at the same time. Well, now that inflation may be a problem again and that interest rates may be a problem again, that's really pressuring small caps, which is here measured by the Russell 2000. And so they're not going up, but some of them on a valuation basis, they're not getting overvalued where we are just a little bit over 20 with the S&P. We're a little bit over 16 with the mid caps. Well, we're just a little bit under 16 right now with the small caps. So that would mean that they're fairly priced, which in a positive environment, the markets might push this up higher than where it's at right now. But because of these other factors coming in, small caps are just not attractive right now. And this is Deutsche Bank. They're forecasting the Fed funds. It's now more hawkish than the alternatives. They came out and think that things are going to be more stringent. The blue line here, this is the actual Fed funds rate. And this is what the Fed fund futures are predicting where we are going to decline going here with the light blue line. Deutsche Bank, these are the red diamonds here. They're actually a little more hawkish, meaning that they're, since they're above the blue line, they think rates are going to be a little bit higher. And then the Bloomberg consensus actually has us declining a little bit more. And then the Fed dots, this is what was released from the, it's called a scatter plot. And they, they put this out now as part of their announcement. And this is where the market was starting to look at the potential of some rate cuts. And looking at lower inflation risk in 2024, we're looking at the core PCE on a year-over-year -year basis where this has been coming down. And now the Bank of America is saying, well, we might go down a little bit more before we start to turn back up. And the Fed is trying to get back down to this yellow line, which is the 2% level. And Deutsche Bank, again, their inflation forecast. This is where we're at right now, where they do see us coming down with the headline PCE as well as CPI and the core PCE. 
So that's a little bit more friendly. And they also project it going forward as looking more friendly. But the Fed wants to bring it down to 2%. Then a couple of charts here on Twitter. It says the Magnificent Sevens waiting hits record high. That's the red line right here. And when you take all of them, since the S&P 500 is a weighted index, that means that the Magnificent Seven stocks, they account for such a huge part of the S&P. And then we have the other areas of the market that also make up the S&P 500. Then this is from Goldman Sachs. This is called the Panic Index. This is similar to the VIX, where we're getting quite a high reading right now with this, which may mean that we're overdoing it in the short term. And we're keeping an eye on these cycles. We topped out around the 10th or so of April. We might see some weakness here going into about the 24th of April. Now, this gentleman, Alan Raminick, if I'm saying that right, he posted something over the weekend and was showing some charts, but they were completely different than these charts. So it's like he picks out these different cycles. And it's like one time he's looking at 1996 cycles and then 2003 cycles. And, blah, 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 blah. and OK, I'm just going to go with this for right now. Then our intraday chart where it looked like, OK, we were going to bounce. This is the main point, the 5110 level that we hit on Friday. And this is the area that I was really focusing on in the videos over the weekend. We closed a little bit up off of that. Then it looked like, OK, we're going to gap higher and then break up to the upside here. Well, we started to. We got up to R1, came back, came down to the unchanged level. Very normal process, especially right after the open and after a weekend. And then it looked like we were going to establish that this gap was now closed and then start to go up. And we did initially. We got above the daily pivot, but then everything started to switch. And we started to go down. We went negative. We went below S1. We came down, actually dropped below S2. And we closed just a little bit below S2 and almost at the low for the day. Here's our intraday chart where we were looking more positive with the futures. And we opened positive, but then everything just tanked after that. And the, the futures, I checked right before I started recording, they're actually a little bit negative now in the initial overnight session. This is still hanging in there for right now where the blue line is above the red line. Even though growth and value did decline on an inter intraday basis, the blue line is still above the red line. So until the red line comes back above, we can kind of hang on, <clears throat> hang on to this as being more of a positive thing. And we did decline with our S&P growth to value ratio, where I was pointing this out over the weekend where it looked like we were holding up quite well. Well, we saw some weakness in Monday's session. Our end of day charts where growth just got hammered with the large caps. It was down more with the mid caps and also down more with the small caps when you compare it to value. The middle area here, these are the this is the large mid cap and small cap ETFs. And small cap growth to value, it's starting to decline again. We were, at least I was kind of seeing this as more positive. If we continue to decline, that's going <clears> to <throat> continue to make things more negative. We also decline with the mid caps when we compare growth to value, but we're still in a longer term uptrend. We're also declining now with the growth to value ratio for the S&P, where it looked like we were holding up a little bit better. We're still in an uptrend, but this is rather discouraging here. We wanted to see this go up, and now it's starting to turn back down. And then discretionary to staples, that ratio continues to fall off, even though it's still in a longer term uptrend. Large cap growth, this was one area that I was pointing out as holding up fairly well after Friday. Well, we now dropped below the moving average. This is a 50 period moving average with large cap growth. So now this is starting to show some weakness. When we look at large caps and small caps, looking at the Russell indexes, this is going up, meaning that the large caps are holding in, holding up a little bit better. And it, but it's not because the large caps are doing well. It's because the small caps are doing worse. And that's why we're seeing this ratio going up. The Wilshire, this is one area that I pointed out over the weekend. We closed right at the 50-day moving average. We've now dropped below that. Looking at our trend, we are turning up and just barely coming across the moving average now. Now, this is not confirmed yet because we have not crossed above 20. If you're more conservative with this indicator, you want to see it cross above the moving average and go above 20 
before you feel more confident in the trend. Now, this trend looks to be developing negative because the red line is on top and going up where the green line is coming down. We're seeing it turn up a little bit more here in the short term, but we're not back above 20 yet. So this is suggesting a stronger developing trend, a non-confirmed trend, but it's a negative trend because the red line is on top. We came up with volume, but we're still trailing off when we take the last number of days of volume together. Sentiment, this is the weekly chart that we look at where we had been extreme. Now we're starting to drop down into this yellow area as the market has been pulling back. We look at the insider transactions ratio roughly about once a week, and this is coming back down into a more neutral area. The sentiment indicator is also starting to really drop down after it was giving us some really extreme positive readings. And so, and we're seeing this pretty much across the board right now as sentiment is really shifting over negative. This has not been updated yet. It'll be updated probably Wednesday or Thursday. This is investors intelligence. The latest reading came in at 4.01. It's probably really gonna drop now. The ulcer index is now starting to go back above the moving average. This is showing that fear is coming into the market. And we're just seeing a real spike up with the VIX, with the line chart, as well as the bar chart. As folks, we're pretty much, assuming, you know, this buy the dip, you know, that a lot of people implement. I don't personally, but it caught a lot of people. And they went in and started buying things thinking, oh, we're going to bounce back. We're going to bounce back. And then that didn't happen. And so now you're seeing more of a panic type situation. We're also seeing a real increase in the volatility of the VIX going up with the bar chart as well as the line chart. And here's the speed of the VIX as measured by the RSI. We're coming up and getting an extreme reading as the VIX has just been shooting higher. And the momentum of the VIX continues to be up as we're going down with stocks. The equity put call ratio, believe it or not, it actually declined in Monday's session. And we're also still declining with the five period on here as well. This is, I wouldn't trust this necessarily because we're getting some erroneous data lately on these charts. And where we had been coming down with the volatility, volatility risk premium, which sometimes we spike up and start to come down. And then we continue to go down when we find a bottom and then start to go up. We've seen that happen a couple of times. We thought, well, maybe after Friday, this was starting to come down and possibly give some support to the S&P. No, that didn't happen. So now we're seeing the volatility risk premium going back up, which really just means if you buy options, they're going to be more expensive. If you sell options, you're going to bring in more income. And here's some fear gauges that I haven't shown in a while because they really haven't been doing very much. This fear gauge is starting to break out for the first time in 2024. When this is going up, that means that fear is increasing. Here's the other fear gauge, which is really doing dropping overall. So I haven't been showing this one. This is starting to pick up as well as more fear is entering the market. Our advanced decline line studies, we are breaking down a bit now based on price and volume. We're still above the moving averages, but we're starting to really roll over here. And that is causing some concern. With the new highs, new lows, we're seeing a little bit of an expansion of the new lows, a real contraction of the new highs. We're continuing to decline with the five period and the 10 period. So this, this isn't necessarily falling apart, but it's certainly turning more negative. We are dropping below the midpoint with our advanced decline ratio, both with the blue line and the red line. Accumulation distribution, I pointed this out over the weekend where we were right on top of the moving average. We needed to see the smart money come in and do some buying on an increase in volume, which would have helped turn this indicator back up. That didn't happen. So we're dropping off and we're still below average with volume. The chicken money flow showed a little bit of a decrease here. It's been going sideways, but it's negative for right now. And the chicken oscillator, which had been positive, is now switched back below the midpoint and it's negative. And we saw a real decline with the cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE. We're also dropping with our regular NYSE advanced decline line and actually coming in below the moving average. This is more of a broad market concern. We're also dropping below the midpoint here. This is another NYSE advanced decline line that's calculated slightly differently. 
And this is it's still in a longer term uptrend, but the fact that we're closing down, coming down below this moving average is a concern. We're dropping when we look at the NYSE common stock advanced decline line, as well as the advanced decline volume. Both of them are just really showing some weakness right now. And when we look at the NYSE new highs minus the new lows, that's another broad market measure. The black, that's just a, a raw score. If we have more new highs than new lows, we get a positive reading. If we have a negative reading, that's because there were more new lows. Well, for the first time now, we're starting to really drop more below zero. So that's turning more negative. We look at the cumulative for the S&P 500 advanced decline line based on price and volume, and they are both declining. We're actually seeing volume show a little bit more velocity as it's going down. This is another measure similar to what I just talked about. This, Instead of looking at the NYSE, new highs minus the new lows, this is based on the S&P 500. We're starting to drop down and turning negative with our daily score. We're coming down with the 50-period moving average, but we're still positive. And here's another look at that same indicator. We're starting to drop down and go zero with this one as well. And we're dropping below the moving averages now with the NYSE based on common stock, the S&P, the mid caps, and the small caps are kind of leading the way more negative at the present time. Here's our daily chart. We came down to the 50 period moving average. We bounced, we closed just a little bit up off of that on Friday. Well, we've now closed down below it. So we lost the shorter term moving averages. Now we're losing the more intermediate term moving averages. And we have to wonder, are we going to come all the way down to the 200-day moving average? Seems unlikely at this point, but anything can happen. The rate of change, I showed this after Friday's session where we went down pretty far, pretty fast from Thursday to Friday. Well, we weren't quite as extreme from Friday to Monday, but we're still getting an extreme reading with this chart. And we're looking a little more negative in the short term with our double and triple exponential moving averages. We're coming down and the lines are now starting to really roll over in a more noticeable way. The Stoke RSI, one of our short-term oscillators, continues to be extreme negative. The Williams Percent R, another short-term oscillator, extreme negative. The CCI 14 is extreme negative as well as the CCI 20. So in the short term, yeah, we're you can make a case that we're oversold and may get some kind of a bounce out of that. If we do get a bounce, be very careful. It doesn't necessarily mean that things are turning back and going positive. What we broke through with those 50-day moving averages may now end up acting as overhead resistance. And we're getting extreme negative with the 20 period exponential moving average. We're declining with the 50 and the 200. And we're getting extreme negative here with the force index. These are Keltner bands, which are similar to Bollinger bands. And when we hit one of these bands, that means we've gone down pretty far, pretty fast. We are extreme negative in the short, short term. Now, with the stochastics chart, this is a further subdivision of the short term time frame. That's why I say short, short term. We're getting extreme, we're declining and not extreme in the intermediate short term, and we're declining and just getting ready possibly to drop below the midpoint in the long short term stochastic. And we're still in the minus two channel here, but it's really widening out. We haven't gone into the minus three area here with our standard deviations chart. Intermediate term, the balance of power is below the midpoint and declining, that's negative. We're actually turning colors again here with the go, no-go system. This is a brown bar. That is negative. We're breaking below the lowest low value, which is the red line, and the midpoint is now starting to roll over. So this is turning more negative. The TTM squeeze was negative after Friday. It's even more negative after Monday. And we're breaking down and seeing where the red line is crossing below the blue line with our double and triple exponential moving average based on 50 periods. The 50 period moving average study, We, I just really was honing in on this over the weekend. Well, we've now broken below that. And now we want to keep an eye on the 100 period moving averages. We're still a ways away from them, but we have to keep this in mind nonetheless. Bollinger bands, we did close below the lower Bollinger band here. That doesn't happen very often. And that's what's measured by the percent B indicator we tend to not stay here for very long. So we may get some kind of a bounce out of this. Now, it may not be much of a bounce. It may be that the, the bands themselves catch up with what's happening. 
and we might not get a really bounce up, it may be more of a decline with the band itself to turn this indicator from being extreme negative. Equi volume is below zero and declining. And we're now seeing the Arun come to life a little bit where the red line has just shot up. And that means sellers are now in control. The green line is going down. That means buyers are going away. So our oscillator has now dropped below zero and has now turned negative. And we're getting really extreme with the S&P McClellan oscillator. This, we haven't seen this high or low of a reading, I should say, in quite a while, at least on this chart. So we're declining with the summation index based on price and volume. The NYSE McClellan oscillator, this is broad market. This had been holding up a little bit better, but now it's starting to get really extreme negative as well. This may produce some kind of a bounce short term. If we do get a bounce, we'll be careful, but we'll try to reevaluate and see if things are turning back more positive. We don't want to get stuck into some kind of a sucker's rally or a dead cat bounce or something like that. The summation index for the NYSE based on price and volume continue to decline. The Swinland Trading Oscillator, also declining based on price and volume. And our oscillators, the PMO, is showing negative momentum, both based on price and volume. We're getting extreme negative with the PMOs that are rising. We're also getting extreme with the buy signals. We're turning down and looking more negative with the PMOs above zero. And we're negative with the Elder's Impulse System. And I pointed out over the weekend, this is a MACD line right here, 165.1. And I think that this might be on here as a potential area of support. But if you look at other times, the market really didn't pay attention to that. So I tend to not use this line all that much. Parabolic SAR on the daily chart is continuing to be negative. If you did not watch the weekly video, we saw our first dot on the top after last week. So that's turning us more longer term negative. The slope oscillator is below the midpoint and declining. That's now negative. The MACD is also declining. We haven't dropped below the midpoint yet, but we are turning more negative here. So when we look at momentum in the short term with the slope and TSI, that's negative. In the intermediate term with the MACD, PPO, and PMO, those are now negative. And we're also starting to see more of a decline with the tricks in the KST, which are our longer term oscillators. And here's where we drop below the 20 period moving averages in the moving average tree. The bu bullish percent index, this had been declining and never really gave us much positive indication. We're still above 50, but after giving us a reading above 70, a sell signal was generated when we dropped below 70. And now we're continuing to decline. If we fall below 50, that's going to turn things even more negative. We're also declining with the NYSE bullish percent index. And we're turning even more negative with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index where we are below 50 and declining. The money flow is below 50 and declining. The ultimate oscillator below 50 and declining. The vortex shows the red line on top and the green line declining. That's negative. We're dropping below 50 again with the RSI 14 and 9. And we could be actually getting to an extreme negative reading not too far from now with the short-term RSI 9. On balance volume has now dropped below the moving average. So if this really continues to go down, that's going to turn things more negative. And because there's a lot of new folks watching the videos, on balance volume was one of the very first technical analysis indicators developed by Joseph Granville way back in the 1960s. There are some real limitations on this, but there's a lot of indicators that are built off of on balance volume. The idea behind this is that if we have an up day, all of the volume is positive. If we have a down day, all of the volume is negative. That's a little too cut and dry without differentiating between buying and selling that goes on within the day. But I still track this because a lot of people use this indicator. And looking at those stocks above their 20 period moving averages, we're getting really extreme negative now, which could produce an oversold condition. We're also dropping below the midpoint and continuing to look more negative with the 50 period moving average study. We're declining with the 100 period moving average study and the 200 period moving average study. The copy curve, a momentum oscillator is dropping below the midpoint and has been negative now for some time. We are declining, but we're more into this neutral area with the Sean trend meter, but the context is that we are declining. 
And I haven't shown this in a daily video for quite a while. This is an itchy Moku cloud. Sometimes I refer to it as an itchy and scratchy cloud. This is a series of moving averages based on current price and then shifted forward. This is really heavily used in some of the Forex trading that may you may be involved in or not. But when we're going up and we pull back, the cloud can sometimes act, act as support. Since we're just starting to enter into the cloud, we're wondering if some area in here will end up giving the market some support. We want to keep an eye on the FIB retracement levels from the all-time high. We still have a ways to go to get down to the 38.2% retracement level. Haven't shown this in a while either. Standard deviation going over the last 10 periods. This doesn't measure direction. This measures speed, or you could even say intensity. And we've been getting pretty low readings below the moving average. Well, now, because the market's starting to pick up steam here, we're seeing the standard deviation starting to pick back up as well and coming above the moving average. Then we're turning more negative and with our different charts, and these measure the trend. The Heiken Ashi is now turning negative. The Kegi is red and pointing down. That's negative. And believe it or not, the Renko finally went, eh, I think something's going on here. It's turned negative now, too. And the three-line break is also turned negative. We're also seeing some O's for the first time here with the point and figure chart. There's no signal that's being generated, but we were seeing an awful lot of X's here, and that was freaking out the point and figure chart. Now that we've pulled back enough, we're seeing some O's drawn in here, which has taken this long, tall up off of the table. But the fact that there are O's in here, that's negative. Long term, we did come down below this R1 level that we've been watching for months. We broke above it. It looked like we were going to be able to use that as support and go higher. To this point now, that has not happened. But this is a weekly chart. And just because we start off the week, we still have four more trading days before this bar is completed. Now, we could see more weakness from here, but if we can come back and close above this before the end of the week or by Friday's close, that would still mean that this support level is holding. We are coming down with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. The 50 period up here, I plot that, but I mainly just use it for reference. I focus on the 150 and 200s on this chart. Different indexes, we are still negative in the short term. We haven't switched over in the intermediate term where I'm seeing more negative things than what the Keller market model is seeing. And we're still negative across the board when we look at the price of bonds. We're negative with stocks in the short term, and we're still negative with commodities in the long term. And no change here with the decision point scorecard. We're seeing where the short term trend and PMO continue to be negative. And we started off looking okay. Th these are the alerts, and you read them from the bottom up, where we started off looking blue or green, and then everything shift negative, shifted over and looked more negative, and it all turned red after that. And the equal weight is really underperforming the S&P 500. So this is more of a broad market decline at this point. The equal weight was actually down just a little bit because the mega caps even got hit pretty hard in Monday's session. The Dow was holding up above this or right at this S2 level after dropping below its 50-day moving average. It's now dropped below that S2 level. That's another level of support that was broken. We continue to be negative with the diamonds, which is the ETF for the Dow. The NASDAQ, we were a, a little bit above the 50-day moving average. Well, we now close down below that. So that's another level of support that was lost. The NASDAQ 100 was right at its 50-day moving average. That has now been lost as well. The Elder's Impulse System for the QQQs have remained at negative. And the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is still negative. And we were, this is another chart I was focusing in on. We were really relying on this 50-day moving average to provide support for the QQQs. Well, we've now broken below that. Small caps, not a real shocker here. They were down, not as much as the rest of the market, but... Now they're going back down more into the lower part of the range they've been in. And we continue to be negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps. And we're also looking more negative with the Russell 2000 small caps. There's two small cap indexes that I follow. One put out by S&P and then the Russell 2000 or the Russell folks. 
where we're declining and not necessarily extreme with the RSI. We're dropping below this support point. In fact, we're right on it right now that the small caps had really been dealing with. We're wondering, can that level hold? Does it even matter at this point? The small caps have been such a disappointment. <clears throat> it would be a real surprise to see the small caps come in and turn everything around for the rest of the market. Usually they like to follow. And then when we get in a more healthy economic environment, that's when they switch over and actually start to lead things higher. But we're not at that point yet. The momentum for the small caps continues to be negative. The mid caps, we came right down about a little bit below the 50-day moving average. Well, we lost that on Monday. And we're also looking more negative with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid caps. <clears throat> Apple was down over 2%. It came up to its 50-day moving average and is now falling back. Is also in a downtrend. Tesla was down, but not on a percentage basis all that much, but it's still been under pressure. NVIDIA was down almost 2.5%. It came down just about to its 50-day moving average. Looked like we could be getting a bounce up off of that, but now we're coming back down closer to the moving average again. Microsoft, haven't shown this chart because they've been holding up. They're coming down to their 50-day moving average as well. So this is another support level we want to keep an eye on. The FANG index, which had been holding up nicely, above the 50-day moving average now has closed just a little bit below the 50-day moving average. The financial sector, which has been a stronger sector, well, after the earnings came out last week, there's going to be more earnings this week. We've dropped below the 50-period moving average here. And that we were already seeing that before since the financial sector was quite weak in Friday's session. Well, it just lost another half a percent in Monday's session. The dollar, not really a big change, but it is in a longer-term uptrend and really has been going up, which is also pressuring stocks. Here's another look where we're seeing the dollar actually breaking out. Oil actually pulled back a little bit to 85. I can't read that number. It's in the 85 range. And then there is a day delay here when we compare the S&P in red with the world index where we're not really seeing much of a correlation here in the short term, and we're kind of flattening out here in the longer term relationship. And here's one of the ETFs that I was showing over the weekend. We're dropping below the 50-day moving average. Now, this is probably the least that I found, the ETF that represents the most stocks of all. 2,651 stocks. We dropped below the 50-day moving average where we were just at the 50-day moving average. So this is more broad market weakness. And we're still hanging out okay. This is the NASDAQ weekly chart. We're still just a little bit above the trend line going back to 2009. But we want to keep an eye on this. And we're continuing to go up here with our NASDAQ to Dow ratio. This could be positive. We came up and set a high level back in 2000 and also in 2021 and then saw a weakness after that. Now we're starting to go back up here. And it's not that the NASDAQ 100 is doing well. It's that the Dow is doing even worse, and that's causing this ratio to go up. Now we look at bonds, where we were, were really going up with the 10-year yield, which means that we're going down with the 10-year based on price. <clears throat> and then looking at our growth to value ratios, we saw some hope coming out of this after Friday's session. Now the Qs to S&P coming back down to their moving average. Discretionary to S&P didn't get much help out of that and continuing to look weak, turning back down when we compare large cap growth to large cap value. So when we look at the large caps, mid caps and small caps, we were looking at some possible improvements. Now that was pretty much taken away on Monday. We're still declining here with our 10 day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. And we're negative with the 19 day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio based on price and volume. Now, if we continue to drop, we're going to get down into this extreme negative area, but we're not there yet. And this is another broad market measure, looking at the five period moving average of the highs minus the lows. We're dropping below zero here when we look at the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE taken together. So what's our outlook for Tuesday? The short and intermediate term are now negative. Support, this convergence of all these things coming together that I was really pointing out over the weekend, We've lost that at this point. And we have to be careful because if we do start to bounce up, that may be resistance. 
We're going to get housing starts and building permits. That tends to be a leading indicator. We're also going to get industrial production and capacity utilization. And we want to keep an eye on what's going on in the Middle East specifically, but something else could erupt at any given time there. And then on Wednesday, we're just going to get the MBA and the mortgage applications index. We're going to get LEI on Thursday. There's going to be no economic reports on Friday. So there's really nothing marked here. Seasonally, we are positive, though, when you look at April 16th, according to the Stock Traders Almanac. Another thing that I didn't go over the weekend is we're entering options expiration week. And we're up 68% of the time and down 32% of the time. But when you take just April 16th itself, we are positive across the board when you look at the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. We also see some positive seasonality here during an election year. And as I tried to point out over the weekend, this red line, this was the top first quarter during an election year, and it ended up doing well. And that's what Jason Jeffrey Hirsch picked up and posted this chart. Even when the first quarter was positive, we still went through a period of weakness here. Not sure where we're at with the Carson chart. For right now, Tuesday is one of the more negative days of the week, but not as negative as Wednesday. And after tax day, this seasonally anyway, is often when we see some bouncing up after that. And then comparing where we're at, which we're dropping down a little bit more, and we compare that with an election year versus a non-election year, Tom Bally still suggesting that we're in this positive time. Yeah, try to tell that to everybody. And then we enter into a negative time before we see positive seasonality into the end of the month. So the warning signs, the equity put call ratio is now going up. And I don't trust that for right now. I'm getting a lot of different data there. We have a long list of negative things. The parabolic SAR, the bullish percent index is declining. The bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 is below 50 and declining. The NASDAQ 100 has now dropped below its 50-day simple moving average. The chicken money flow and chicken oscillator are negative. The ultimate oscillator, Copic curve, vortex, those are all negative. Our oscillators are declining after giving us an extreme positive reading. And the S&P has dropped below short, intermediate, and long-term. I don't know whether to call this resistance or support. We could say that this was support. Well, that support did not hold as of after Monday's session. And then we're keeping an eye on these negative divergences. And then the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 continues to be negative. Pretty short list right now on the positive side where the long-term trend is still positive. And the financial sector is still positive, but it's starting to show some weakness now as well. So our conclusion, we're in negative in the short and intermediate term, and we've dropped below support. So we're negative, but we're becoming more oversold in the short term. We're negative and below support in the intermediate term. We're still positive in the long term, though. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a good day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.